Are you stressed, achy, and fatigued at your home office as well as your work office? Do you want to learn some desk side fitness techniques to help you fight fatigue? Um, then join me this week as I chat with Alessa Carditi on how I create desktop fitness for busy professionals. Join us. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Fanny Dunnigan Show. I'm coming to you live from LinkedIn, Facebook, as well as YouTube. So depending on what time zone you're in, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and thank you for tuning in. This week, we are going to have a guest talk all about desk side fitness that we can do. So we can even do it in the midst of our busy workday. So definitely stay tuned for that. In the meantime, let's see who has joined us so far. Um, first of all, I want to make sure that you see Anne Small in the uh, comments there. She is always there to help us along. She's my community manager for the show. And uh, who else do we have? Brayden. Welcome, Brayden. Always great fan of yours, Mansfield, Texas. Mark Reynolds from Farmersville. Hey, Mark, one of my Association of Business Technology fellow board members. Um, Chandra, welcome. Always great to see you, Chandra, from Garland, Texas. Uh, yes, make sure you introduce yourself. Tell people where you're um, tuning in from. Let people know what your expertise is. Use this time to network with other people in the comments and grow your network and grow your community. So please make sure you network with others in the comments. And I challenge you to connect with at least three new people today and uh, build your community. I have some of the best audience members 
ever on this platform, <laughs> self-proclaimed, but um, they're just wonderful human beings. People that usually tune in this show are here because they want to connect, they want to learn, they want to grow, just like me. Um, that's what I want to do as well with this platform. So make sure you connect with each other and um, grow your community. So I want to bring on Anne real quick just to introduce her, and uh, you are going to see her in the feed. Welcome, Anne. Hello, everybody. Get ready, Thanks. get set. Yes, yes. And she will make sure that I don't miss any questions that you guys have, especially for our awesome guest today. So I'll see you in the comments, Anne. Okay. So as I do every week, I want to share a content tip of the week with you. As you know, I'm super passionate about encouraging others to create content. And so this week's tip is all around repurposing your content. One thing that you can do, especially if, let's say you are a writer and you write, you're great at writing blogs, long form blogs, or you are great at talking and doing videos and you've recreate you've created maybe a webinar or a long form video, you can definitely post those things on LinkedIn or any kind of platform. But what you can do with that is to repurpose your content. So if you have, let's say a 60 minute webinar or a video that you have, you can cut out little snippets of it and create short form videos and short video clips out of that. And from there, you can also create PDF slides with Canva and do scrolling PDF slides on uh, LinkedIn. On Instagram, you can do Canva carousels. And um, so there's a whole variety of ways that you can repurpose your content. So my tip is to take your long form articles and videos, chop them up, into micro content um, and videos can be done, long form videos can be chopped up into short video clips and articles can also be chopped up into slides or image posts or very short scrolling PDF carousels on LinkedIn. So whenever you can make sure you repurpose your content and spread it out and plan it out over the weeks and months. And that way you get a longer shelf life of your content. So that's my content tip of the week. And for those of you out there, if you want more content tips, they are now all on my YouTube channel and you can see all of them. Um, let me, there it is. You can see all of my content tips on my YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe to them. There's over 30 content tips there now. And that's youtube.com backslash Fanny Dunnigan. And you can find all my content tips there. Okay. And now I want to share a quote of the week. And because we're talking about fitness, I thought I'd keep it simple and just reiterate the importance of health. So my content tip of the week is, or my quote of the week is, the first wealth is health by Ralph Waldo Emerson. Um, without health, we really don't have anything. And, um, and for all our busy hustle of being entrepreneurs and working from home and the stresses that we have, um, we really have nothing if we don't have our health. And that's why this week, I really wanted to bring to you this special guest that's going to teach us all around stretches and very uh, posture techniques and movement. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, what, you know, what's the role of all this hard work and wealth, if we don't even have our health. So I hope you will be guided by this quote of the week. The first wealth is health. Awesome. Okay. So I see we've been joined by several more people. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Yolanda, you're already a subscriber. Thank you so much. Awesome. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you for tuning in from Facebook. Awesome. And Yolanda is from YouTube. Awesome. Awesome. Jennifer, 
um, from Brooklyn, New York. Welcome, Jennifer. So I hope all of you are ready to do some stretches and learn some great techniques. And you are going to learn so much from my guest. And uh, so I want to bring her on now. As I mentioned, today's topic is how I create desk side fitness for busy professionals. So we don't even have to leave our desk if we don't want to. I want to bring on Alessa Carditi. She is the owner of Jobu Fit, Power Posture Pro and Movement Coach. Welcome, Alessa. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Absolutely. I was just thinking back. It was um, oh, Michelle Baker, right? That introduced yep, us. That, that yeah, right? that put us in touch. Yeah. She it. is, I mean, she's a rock star. So, yes. Yeah. For those of you, Definitely. she was on, she was one of my guests last year. She is a sales and confidence coach. So make sure you connect with Michelle Baker. She's an amazing person. But Alessa, I want to read a little bit of your bio here because you have like such a great variety of paths. And then you kind of put everything together into this exactly. offering that you bring to, um, to the community nowadays, right? Yeah. So Alessa is the Power Posture Pro, and um, she is a UCLA graduate and certified Pilates instructor, educator, and author. She's taught Pilates and dance professionally on three continents and owned her own Pilates studios in two countries. And uh, it was during her three years owning a Pilates studio in Okinawa, Japan, that she experienced firsthand what makes Okinawans some of the healthiest, longest living people on the planet and how this culture cares for and emphasizes the physical health of his people. Alessa knew their practices combined with her ana uh, anatomy-based knowledge needed to be translated for the rest of the world. And this is where Jobu Fit, the workplace movement company was born. And here we are. <laughs> Yep, we are what, here. <laughs> what a pass. I mean, Alessa, tell me how you kind of came through Pilates and dance to, to where you are now. How did that transition happen? There's a couple of things that were like kind of um, funny happenstances at the time were really tragic to me. Um, so I decided after I finished undergrad that I was going to move back east because I'm originally from New York. So, hey, Brooklyn, um, I totally get that. And um, I moved back to New York and I really thought I was going to dance on stage. I have a BA in dance. My focus was in anatomy because I always wanted to know how this works, how this amazing machine actually works. So that was a real big passion for me. And after... I think it was like six months after I moved back to New York, I ended up breaking my foot and I couldn't dance. And the only two shoes I could wear were rain boots and sneakers. And that was pretty devastating to me. So I needed to figure out how I was going to be able to provide for myself and really take care of myself. And that's when I got into Pilates. Um, and that from there, um, I am a kind, the kind of person that I dedicate myself to something and I want to become really the best that I can at that. So I took certification after certification and studied for hours and started training and did sports training and pre and postnatal and really kind of dived headfirst into or dove headfirst into absolutely everything that I possibly could. So I really wanted to understand how the body worked from a different aspect because I could no longer do the dancing side of the things, which was my first passion. And then fast forward a couple of years later after I'm training and I was doing some fit modeling at that point in New York, um, I met my husband and he is a Marine in the United States Marine Corps. Um, and we moved to Japan <laughs> via our honeymoon. So wow. I ended up getting thrown in in another situation um, in a foreign country and just trying to figure out like, what can I do now? Um, I had my Pilates knowledge. I didn't know anybody there. So those two things, uh, I just decided, hey, I'm going to start training anyone who wants to be trained in Pilates. And at that point, it was the way for me to make friends. Um, and then I was able to also train all different kinds of bodies. So Marines, sailors, soldiers, airmen, um, DOD personnel, stay-at-home moms, local nationals, 
really got to run the gamut on all hardworking bodies and what it is that they, they do. Um, and then at that point, I was able to see the daily workouts of the people of Japan and specifically Okinawa, because that's where I was living at the time. Um, and they have something that's called the radio workout. And every day their music plays and it doesn't matter the age, doesn't matter what your job is. Everybody stops and they do the same workout every day. Um, and this was something that I constantly saw. I saw every morning while I was walking my dog on the seawall. It was on the radio? Um, it's so, yeah. So like we have, you know how we have um, lampposts here, like on the streets, mm -hmm. they have lampposts with speakers. And then they also have like in offices, they have speakers that will play it. And then if you're at home, there's a radio station that you can tune into. So there's really no excuse wow. to not be fit It's across there. So the whole city? across like the whole country does it and oh even gosh. in Tokyo I've heard but I haven't seen some um, of the professionals like in, that work in these buildings will actually go up to the roof and line up and do it or they'll do it at their desk but it's all standing wow. and it's a really like a awakening like full body stretching kind of move, movement um, and so I got to witness this in the Okinawan version and what it was for me it was the construction workers that were working to build the seawall while I was there. Um, and then there'd be the little old lady that was walking her dog and the music would start and she would tie her dog up to the lamppost <laughs> really quick and then line up with the construction workers. And they all knew them, the, they all know the movements. They all, and, you know, and it was one of those things that they it didn't, it didn't matter like who you were, what you did, you knew that this was going to be beneficial for your body. So you did it and that, and they learn it in grade school. Um, and then it, they take it with them you know, at, as they grow. So I was able to see that. And I was like, wow, this is a light bulb moment. This needs to be translated for the rest of the world. Why don't we have this? Why isn't there something like this, you know, that we can pull upon? Um, and then, you know, so I, I kind of like tucked that away when I was there yeah. and then working with all these different bodies in my Pilates studio and engaging with them. What I found is it didn't matter what they did, you know, how, how physical they were to how much they were sitting typing at their desks. Everyone had two complaints that their back hurt. So like some part of their back hurt and that they had stress and then stress started to ma manifest physically. Yeah. So it didn't matter what their job was. This is, that was just the, the recurring theme that just, I, I kept hearing over and over and over again. And then I was watching this workout and I was like, okay, there's something, something yeah. has to be here. Um, and then I'm, you know, owning my studio when I was in Okinawa, I was like, I can do anything. And so I decided when we moved back to the States, I was like, I can start my own business. And I was a Pilates instructor and a dancer. I went to school for dance. I am an artist, yeah. I'm a creator. So this was like a really wide awakening getting mm -hmm thrown into owning a business and doing a lot of reading and taking online courses and kind of figuring everything out. Um, and so then I kind of took it all in and kind of uh, created like Joe Buffett, you know, 1.0, um, tried it out, get, brought it to offices. I was in Manhattan at the time. So offices in Manhattan and kind of took it around um, and then realized no one wanted 15 minute fitness and no one wanted fitness where they had to even stand up, let alone like stretch their arms up to the lights. Nobody wanted that. So I had that to surprises kind of, me. I mean, like oh, it, for, really to go from a country like that is so dedicated to health, right? Like, first of all, I want to acknowledge like how cool that is that yeah. literally the whole country stops to take several minutes for their health. Like uh, I'm, I want to sign up for that. Right. Like, but yeah, you um, would think that, that you would think <laughs> that, that makes sense. People would be like, yes, I want this, but yeah. no. Who else would that love that in the case. comments? Let me know. In the comments. Let us know. Yeah. I mean, give us a thumbs up. <laughs> um, but then, yeah. So tell me about, so you're in Manhattan and people didn't want this kind of like 15 minute short. Yeah. So like I, I got a couple of things that are like feedback. What the first was they didn't want the same thing every day. It was boring. That's that like almost verbatim. This is boring. I was like, okay. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. This is for your health. Um, and then the second thing was, is that it took too long. Mm. And 
I get it. I understand that you have a lot going on. You schedule your day. And so then I said, okay, there has to be a way that we can fix this. Yeah. And from there, I, I decided to take, I mean, I, I love your, your content tip of the week about how you take something and then break it into smaller pieces. Cause that's actually what I did for the first, like for Jobu Fit 2.0, let's call it, yeah. is really take the leg section of the full body workout and deliver that the next time I went into an office. Mm -hmm. And then it broke it into the arms and then it took it into your core and then we have stabilizing. So Jobu Fit functions in four pieces now. And that's mm -hmm. what it is. We work on uh, a different body part each week. So we focus on upper body, lower body, core, and stabilization. And because nobody wanted to stand up, um, <laughs> the only thing that you stand up for is sitting stabilization. In chair. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can tell you stories that people that have literally told me, like I walk into my office at 9 a.m. and I, the next time I get up is when I leave at 5 p.m. And I'm like, oh God, that's awful. Yeah. Um, first of all, you're not drinking enough water. And secondly, you need to move more. Yeah. Um, but well, yeah, let's, so let's like, dive a little deeper into that before we kind of get, uh, get too far is that like what, what prompted you to kind of, or what were you observing in the workplace and like the the challenges that people were having and the stresses and the aches, right? Cause like yeah. everything is born out of a problem or challenge, right? And you're providing the solution for that. But what were some of the observations that you were noticing in the workplace? So two things about stress. Um, stress can start one of two ways. And the first way is physical. You know, you've been sitting like this for so long, you actually, you physically hurt, right? And then you're like, oh, I got to finish this, but I'm so tired. I can't sit in this position. And then that starts to weigh on you mentally. And then you start to feel like, oh, I can't finish this and I have to get it done, but I'm in so much pain. And so then you start this cycle, it becomes mental. And then it goes back to the physical because you have to stay there longer and it becomes more painful. Or it can start the other way, whereas you, you hang up the phone call with your boss and he's yelling at you or she's yelling at you because you, you haven't gotten something done fast enough. And then you're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe that I'm still working on this. And then you start to get a headache and then you start leaning down and you start to get the body aches. And so then it cycles that way. And if you don't break the, the downward spiral of stress, it's just going to keep it, it keeps building on itself, right? So you have to take a step back. And then those two things, so stress and aches really go hand in hand. And that was a major thing that I saw, especially, I mean, I gave talks on Wall Street pre-COVID years ago, where I walked into an Italian bank and the, the woman that hired me in HR was like, nobody's going to stop what they're doing. They're not going to, you know, they're not going to look like they're listening to you, but they're going to be listening to you. And I was walking around talking to people, like pretending that everybody in the room was completely eyes on me. And, but they weren't, they were, you know, answering their phones and doing whatever it is that they were doing. Um, and at one point I did stand up on a chair and to get people's attention to see if I could really, you know, like, this is good for you. You want to try this <laughs> kind of yeah. thing, um, yeah. which is always fun. Yeah. Um, but then afterwards, I didn't realize it, but I got so many emails just saying, thank you for coming in today. You really gave me a moment or gave me five minutes of a break that showed me that the value of taking a break. Yeah. And I honestly, I don't even, I can't even remember. It was probably about four years ago now. And, and the, the room was full. So, you know, maybe 10, 15, 20 people in desks and just kind of a lot of noise and me yeah. like, it felt like yelling. Right. Um, and then you really, you, you realize that you affect people even in this, in the slightest ways. And that was their stress and being able to take a step back and really valuing their, you well, know, we get tunnel vision the moments, right? Yeah. We get tunnel vision yeah. at our desk and we don't even think about taking a break and like we're on this hamster wheel, right? We're like, mm -hmm. gotta get it done, gotta yeah. get it done, gotta get it done. And then it's always refreshing when somebody says, pause, Yeah, <laughs> let's do this. Um, yeah. and, and one of the things you do is you have this kind of like three-step posture check, right? Yeah, uh, to help people fight fatigue, and and we have a video, but but set us up um, while I yeah. set up. Like, tell so us about we, that. I mean, like this hamster wheel, right? We we're on this right, where it's no stopping. You get you your tunnel vision is going. You have to accomplish for the day. You're really working through absolutely everything, but 
the whole time you're sitting in one place and you sit throughout your day, right? So you sit when you go to eat, if you're commuting, you're sitting, if you're going out, then you go out and sit at a bar with friends. Then when you even go to sleep, the majority of Americans, of human beings, wherever you are, you end up sleeping in a, in a position that looks like a lot of sitting on your side, right? In the fetal position, that looks like sitting. So the, the real idea behind this three-step posture check is you want to be able to check yourself while you're on that hamster wheel, while you're in your, that statue mode of getting all of your work done, because you want to benefit your bodies for the workplace. And then you can take this idea with you wherever else you go, because you're not going to avoid sitting. And this is where the three-step posture check comes in. It's really very simple. It's three steps. And you know you can give it a try whenever you start to feel stressed and you need that moment. I love it. Okay, guys, for those of you in the audience, you're at home, you're not even live, <laughs> or you're <laughs> live, but you, you you don't have to get on video. So let's all try this because, you know, ever since I met Alessa, I, I've been like fascinated by what she's talking about. And, and I think this is really important for us for our health and, um, you know, to fight fatigue and stress. So I'm going to play this video. I think we should all do this from the comforts of our home and get our posture check, right, Alessa? Yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, let me get this set up here. And for those of you at home, let's do this all together. And I'm gonna maximize this and play this. Hi, I'm Alessa Caridi, founder of jogafit.com, your home for workplace wellness and fitness. I believe in the power of proper posture we call it the Jogu setup so that you can live a healthy life and age gracefully. We're going to start with our feet. So you can do this with me. Here we go. We're going to look down, have to look down, make sure all 10 toes are firmly planted on the ground and they're facing forward. This is probably the most important tip that I'm going to give you. We want to reduce the risk of pain or injury to the ankle and knee. Also, this will reduce any kind of pain in your hips, even all the way up to your shoulders and your neck. So really look down at the toes, by looking down, we're going to establish a firm mind-body connection, and this is something that should be revisited throughout the day. And now we're going to make our way all the way up through our spine. We're going to extend everything all the way long. We're going to lift up through the chest. We don't want to think up and forward with the chest. Instead, we want to think someone is pulling one strand of hair all the way up. Everything is going to reach up. This way, you're going to stay in that anatomical S position. I'm sure it's something that you've heard your GP mention to you about your health and wellness during your checkups. When you're in this S curve and the S curve of your spine, you're at your most jovu, strong and solid, which is exactly what we're trying to establish here. From there, you want to make sure that there's no tension in the head or neck. So you're going to keep your shoulders down and you're just going to shake your head no and then yes. So you keep all the tension out of the neck and the spine up nice and long. For more information about this and to get the full JoguFit setup video, you can jump over to jogufit.com and click at the top of the page, getting started. Have a productive day. And as we say, remember to work it out. <laughs> That's awesome. Actually, tell me, what is the purpose of doing the the turning the head and then the nodding? What does that help us? Um, so actually, what we say is we say, no, I am not ready for my work day. But yes, <laughs> I'm going to practice proper posture and remember to be Joe Boo. And the reason why you do that is right, we've established a nice long spine because we're reaching from the top of the head up and so not from the chest. Um, but what happens is when you stay up nice and long, this kind of, you know, like you think, oh, my goodness, I have to be as tall as I can. And then this, for whatever reason, decides to become isolated and just tense. So by pressing your shoulders down and saying no and yes, you can really just be able to breathe. Um, and then also throughout your workday, just that simple motion of yes and no um, really is life-changing because so many people, even though you're on your computer, take tension right here. This is everything that comes in. And then there's the people who are on their phones and this happens, right? We are, like our technology is constantly getting smaller, but that doesn't mean our bodies have to get smaller with it. We all, and the other thing that I constantly say is check yourself before you check your tech. So before you approach your phone, before you approach, approach your laptop, desktop, whatever it is, yeah. make sure you do your three-step setup so that, that way you're sitting tall, you have a strong body, and then you can practice this when you're at your desk and then in the workspace and beyond.
So that's the goal. I love it. Okay, so to reiterate, and for those of you in the audience, let us know whether you tried it while she was doing that demo. So first one was to have our feet pointed and flat on the ground, right? That was the exactly. first step. And then yep. the second was making sure that Long our, spine. and like somebody's holding our heads up, right? Mm -hmm. And then yep. what was the third one? Was the third one the nodding and the shaking? Yep. Okay. Yep. Head yes and no. Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah. I love the show, right? <laughs> no, I don't want to go back to work. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah. yeah. How many of you have tried it in the comments? Let us know. Um, there we go, Chandra. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, Todd had a comment here. He said, I learned something about being lazy when you stand up from a seated position. Don't lean forward and bring your quads into play. Move to the edge of the chair, engage your quad and stand straight up. Ah, interesting. Yeah, definitely. The one thing that I will say um, that uh, about that, and I love the fact that you're not getting your quads involved and you're really focusing on your core, Todd. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, that's the name of the game. That's one of, if you go to jobufit.com and you click on the start here and you watch the whole video because the actual sitting setup is about six steps. Um, and this was like the take it with you, do it quick kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But um, the last step that we do is actually talking about engaging your core and okay. where your core comes into play, even when you're sitting. Um, yeah. And what I do is my core and breathing practices are from my dance days. So I, I don't teach belly breathing. Um, I teach strong core. And so Todd, if you go and check that out and everybody, if you go in and check that out, um, you can go and watch the whole thing, which is like four minutes. I promise it's not long. It's not, you know, it's a huge thing. Um, but it, it will talk you through absolutely everything, even shoulder placement as well, which is huge. Um, and it'll show you how to maintain the core strength and really build on your core strength so that when you do stand up, you actually push through your hamstrings to stand uh, up. And then you're not really, I mean, you have to get your quads involved a little bit, right? Because that's the mechanism that strength that straightens your knee. Um, but we don't want to grab onto that. So I love it. And it's joewufit.com. We have a whole variety of people that tried it. <laughs> Elliot, Mark, uh, Yolanda, awesome, Sarah, <laughs> Debbie. Shout out to Debbie, by the way. Debbie helps me a lot with a lot of the written content uh, that comes out. So make sure you all connect with Debbie as well. And uh, Chandra was also trying it also. Thank you. No, that's like, it's that's the genius of it. I feel like Alessa, that it's, it's very simple. And yet it's even just pausing to do that made me like more conscious of where my body was. Cause I realized I, I lean forward a lot. And then like, I guess my back ends up like curving instead of being straight. Yeah. And so and then, instead of being upright. Yeah. yeah. So we all have our, we have our bad habits and there's, there's a reason that they're habits, whether they're good or bad, it's because we constantly do them. And so that's why we really talk about taking a moment to bring focus back to, to your physical body, because we only get one of them. You don't get any trade-ins. So you got to learn how to use it and we really have to protect it. And there's, you know, I, I love meditation and I start my day with meditation every day. Um, but meditation can only take you so far. So when you want clarity, that's a, a brilliant tool. And this is something that I like to mention now because we work on the whole body at Chopu Fit, right? We talk about breathing. We do talk about taking mental, mental breaks. But I think something that's lacking in today, you know, whether it's social media, whether it's, you know, workspace, health, whatever aspect of your life that you're coming into, we forget that we have to take care of our body to do our jobs, right? Because we take care of our brain. If you're reading a book to get better at whatever job that you're doing, yeah. but you're, you're not physical at your work. So you don't necessarily say, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to be physical here so that I can better myself for my work. I love it. We have a Great question here from David Cause on LinkedIn. So he is in a wheelchair, an amputee. Any tips for that? I guess that's um, so still just sitting as well, but there's, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I, so I don't know exactly what kind of mobility um, David has, but definitely um, breathing as an exercise is huge. Um, and then core work and core strength. And I really 
would tell you, David, to go and tr look at the total um, setup video, because within that, um, it'll talk about placement, like where your lungs are versus your core and being able to wrap your abs around and having that idea. Um, and that is something also, with, especially if you're in a wheelchair and you're, you're moving it yourself, I'm sure that takes a toll on your upper by your up your spine and shoulders and biceps and triceps and all of those things. And just to be able to like refocus on proper posture there could really benefit you. Mm. Interesting. And then we also have a question from Brayden. Um, do you think standing desks are a fad? I'm standing more on video calls and find it beneficial. Curious. So this is actually a perfect segue into something that I love to talk about mm -hmm. because I stand. So the opposite of sitting is actually not standing. Ooh. I know it's like, let's talk blowing. about that. Yes. Yeah. So this is a really uh, great segue. And I think standing desks are wonderful. And I have friends that use standing desks because they have um, like ha uh, handicaps that don't allow them to sit for long periods of time. Um, I have come across people that have literally told me it's healthier to stand so I don't sit anymore. Um, all of the different multitude of reasons of why you would why you would stand instead of sitting. And that that is totally fine. but you have to do it correctly. And then if once you do it correctly, you have to understand that it is still part of the statue lifestyle. Okay. The one that we're, you know, the whole sitting is the new smoking idea is really the statue lifestyle is the new smoking idea. So whether you're sitting or you're standing, if you're in one spot, that's the issue. So when you take that and you decide to say, okay, what's the opposite of sitting and standing, right? And you're throwing that in there and it's actually movement. Ah. So that's where Joe Buffett comes in is that we teach you how to sit. We also have a video for standing correctly. So if you go over to joebuffett.com, you click on the blog, you will you know, kind of shuffle through that a little bit and you'll find uh, standing strong. Um, which are our tips that work from the bottom all the way up to the top, the same amount of steps. There's a video form for that. Um, if you also go over to uh, Joe Buffett on LinkedIn or on, sorry, Instagram, there well, are videos about that. Instagram while we're doing this because I'm, I'm a visual person. I think a lot of people are okay. visual. <laughs> Let me pull up your Instagram because that's where I kind of saw a bunch of great exercises as well. So this is my new personal page. So you're going to, you're on here, you will get all of my moves and tips in video form. The standing video has not made it there yet. At Joe Buffett, there is mo many standing videos to help you in different aspects. So again, going back to your content tip for tip of the week, we've yeah. broken it down into little bits and you can get that everywhere. Um, but really, uh, Alessa.JoeBuffett is just me and it is just moves and it's just content for your workspace. Healthy moves to keep you moving in your workspace. Yeah, and we're going to try some of these a little later. So stay tuned, guys. I I was actually when I was doing research for the show, I was like doing everything that you had on your Instagram. <laughs> so like, oh, I need to build this into my day for sure. Um, okay, so before we go on, I did uh, before we wrap up that three step posture check, there was sure. that topic that we were saying, like your chair desk tech relationship right? Yes. Um, tell me about that. So um, within your chair desk tech relationship um, sits this three-step posture check. And mm -hmm. it's really because things that are never going to change. Your chair is never going to leave us. A table or a desk is never going to leave us. And you will always need some form of technology. So just like I had mentioned before, um, we have a chair desk tech relationship. We want to make sure to check ourselves before we check our tech. And that also includes, you know, approaching your seat versus to your chair. And that's why getting both feet firmly on the ground, making sure that all 10 toes are pointed forward and really anchoring yourself to your chair is 
that is the most important thing. Do I expect you to hold this position the entire workday? You know, you're going to be seated in one space. No, yeah. we're humans. You move. You're gonna, you know, kind of shift and move around. But then, then just like we were talking about, Fanny, how your your bad posture habit when you're sitting yeah, at your desk. I, like, yeah, because I like. Right. So when that starts to happen, then you're like, oh, wait, I remember what Alessa said. Do the three step posture check. And then you pull yourself back to it and you're able to power through your day. And it, that's that's really the Joe Buffett way of doing it. We have a question from Sharon. She says, any tips for a workplace where you're standing a lot? So this is the opposite so, of all, us here standing yeah. all staring at our our computer. Yeah. So Sharon, I think the the best um, tip that I can give you is if you're standing and, and you're still, you're moving around a lot, but you're still standing, you don't have the option to sit down and rest. Um, the best thing that you can do is actually stretch. So um, so it, the best thing for a simple stretch for standing, because you really want to give your hamstrings a break, is simply stand tall, put your feet together, tuck your chin to your chest and roll down and reach towards your toes. You don't actually have to touch your toes if you can't do that, just hanging over your legs and breathing in through your nose, out of your mouth and kind of get keeping that oxygen flowing is a great thing. And then if you're actually, you're moving around and you're in a place with a lot of people, you may want to put, remember to put your back to a wall just so that your bum is not in the middle of the air and in the middle of your workspace. I don't know if that's something you're conscious of, but just like an added little tip of something to think about. Oh. Um, when I would do these moves in, in workspaces, that's uh, what I would get a lot is that people would just say, I don't want to do downward dog in front of my boss. And I'm like, okay, I get that. I understand that 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 reads to me. I understand. Yes, yes. So yeah. back against the wall, um, toes facing just make forward. Sure, but don't make, make sure you're not leaning on a wall. You can't be up against a wall because actually, for you to put yourself your back up against a wall and roll down is anatomically impossible. So don't do that. But okay. step away from the wall and just make sure your back is facing the wall, not against it. Awesome. Now we have this question from Kevin, but I think. Our next topic is going to answer this question. He said, is there a recommendation okay. to do this, say, for five minutes every two hours to get maximum okay, benefit? So yes. Again, <laughs> you guys are great with these questions. They're just but coming at the right time. Your, Thank you, Anne. <laughs> you have this 50-10 ratio, right? Doesn't this answer yes. it? Tell us about yes, that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. The perfect segue. So yes, and what we do at Joe Buffett and what our program answers with Joe Buffett, our, our online, now online program, because before it was in person and we were doing a bunch of different things. Um, now it's totally online. Um, I ha we have something that we call the 50-10 ratio. And that means for every 50 minutes you spend seated or standing, but the goal is that you, that you spend in that statue position, right? Whatever your statue position is. Um, for every 50 minutes that you're there, you spend 10 minutes minutes moving. So what I tell people is consciously make the decision to go walk and get a glass of water, to go take a walk around the block, to do a couple of stretches, to, to make sure you're stepping away from a computer screen, because this is also very important. Your eyes are muscles too, and they need a break. They need to stop looking at your screen, even if it is for five to 10 minutes. Uh, we oh, need to give ourselves a brain our eyes. Yes. That's so really you important. have to remember that our eyes are muscles too. And we need to, they need a break. They need to be shown some love. And we can even do an eye stretch if you want. Let's <laughs> do one. Let's do it. Too. Let's do it right yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is all you have to okay. do it with us in the audience. All okay. Right. So pardon the funny faces, but this is what you have to do. So you want to make sure that your head stays still. And the best way to do that is just to hold it. So you can put your hand on your chin, however you want to do it. And then you're going to start by looking forward. And then you're going to look as far as you can to one side. And you're not moving your chin. And then you're going to look up and roll your eyes to the right side. And then you're going to up and you're going to go back to the other side. And then you're going to go up and then to the other side. And then you come back to center. It's harder than you think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's really something that you have to focus on. But, you know, everyone rolls their eyes. So make it work for you. Give your eyes a break. And then the other thing that you can do, which is it also sounds kind of silly, but close them and squeeze it closed. So if you really and then open. So you're really tensing your oh. eye muscles and then you relax. You're, you're, it's, it, uh, it's another way of stretching. Wow. It's just called, you know, grabbing onto that tension and then releasing it away. And also remember to breathe too, because that can also cause you to stop breathing for a little and for bit. For those of you tuning in right now, we are making these funny faces because we are yes. exercising I, I, our eyes. <laughs> 
I, I tell people that all the time. Whenever I'm it. doing something, all of these like screenshots, you go to my Instagram, you see yeah. the cover photos of things. I am always making funny faces. And it's just because I'm moving. I'm talking to you because I want you to get this. And I get really yeah. excited about it because I want you to be healthy in the one place you have to be, your workspace, wherever that may be. So really just go with my funny faces. That, I love that's- it. Oh, I love it. I love it. And uh, actually... <laughs> yeah, because Kevin was like, I stretch. And then yeah. <laughs> uh, Jennifer says, love it. So she definitely tried it. Ah, Mark has a great question. Can you do this in bed to fall asleep? The eye stretches specifically? I'm sure you could. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't see why not if that's where you are. The one thing that I, I do say um, about bed in general, um, mm-hmm. don't work in your bed. Don't do, I mean, we're, I don't yeah. know if... I, we, at one point in the past year, we were all work from home warriors. Yeah. Um, and that was kind of our, our normal. And some people are starting to go back into offices, which is wonderful. Um, but if you're still working from home, the, the the mental, you need to separate the idea of working from your, the bed is a place to sleep. Yeah. So if you have that crossover there, it's not, it's not good for anybody. So really just focusing on, setting up a workspace, even if it is your kitchen table, you know, even if it is something that wouldn't normally be a space that you work in, you know, kitchen counter, if you're standing, um, but still make sure that it, I don't do the bed. I love it. Um, look, you got a, you got a new follower. Sharon says following Alessa at Joe dot Joe Boothit on Instagram. I do want to awesome. share that again, actually. Uh, is that on? Yes, there it is. Um, for those of you that want to try some of these exercises and stretches, it's alessa.jobufit on Instagram. So make yeah, sure and you go also, find her. Mm-hmm. Try try them out and let me know what you like. And then yeah. you can always send me a message and say, hey, I want a, you know, an exercise for my calves or I want something for, you know, this is what's bothering me. Tell me and I will provide. Yep. David says great information. Love it. Um, <laughs> Brayden, <laughs> he's so funny. My advice for eye stretches to, <laughs> to end by closing your eyes and keep them closed until. <laughs> yes, thanks, Brayden. Thanks. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I love it. Okay, so we've learned all this stuff. So let's let's do it. Let's do some stretches. You have some okay. stretches for us, right? And I'm gonna do yes. it as well. I'm gonna make sure I don't like get into any of these chords. And all of you at home, make sure you try these along yeah. with us. Okay. And that's the the first thing that we do in Jobu Fit videos is say like make sure your workspace is free and clear of anything. Yeah. You're not gonna knock anybody over. Um, mm-hmm. When we were in you know, in offices, it was more like, look around, make sure you're not going to kick your neighbor, some, those kinds of things. So really just kind of be aware of your surroundings. I do not replace broken furniture. So that is on you. <laughs> um, we th- Then the next thing that we normally do in any Joe Buffett video is set it up, which is the sitting setup. So we start from the bottom and then we work our way up, which we have talked about already. So you just want to check your toes. You're going to actually look down, make sure all 10 toes are forward. The whole foot is on the ground. Your yeah. spine is nice and long. And then you're just going to shake your head no. No. And yes, I'm going to practice proper posture to be strong. Then the first thing that we're going to do is for our shoulders, since we haven't talked about them yet. I want you to clasp your hands, but I want you to do this behind your back. So you're going to clasp your hands and you're going to press your palms down to the chair that you're sitting in. Ah, okay. So your palm is down on the chair. Then you're All going right. to stretch through your chest and lift your chin up to the lights. So you're really going to feel that opening in your chest. Yes. And your chin is reaching all the way up. So take a deep breath here and then you're going to relax and bring everything all the way back down. Oh my God. Bring that down. felt so good. <laughs> it's yeah. like the opposite of my usual. Exactly. That's exactly the goal there is that you spend so much time like this. So yes. we want to undo everything. Okay. And so then the next thing that we're going to do for our arms is you're going to take one arm and it's going to go across your body. Mm-hmm. Then you take your other arm. It's going to hook underneath and you're going to put your palm up. Good. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take this hand that's up and you're going to pull it towards you. Hmm. And then you're going to press your shoulders down and then you're going to look away from your hands and then take a deep breath. One more time. 
and then you're going to come back to center and you can straight shake it out and we're going to do the other side because you have to make sure everything is even so other oh arm is going to come across I love this you're going to hook it underneath you're going to pull the hand towards you you're going to drop your shoulders down away from your ears look away from your fingers and breathe and then you're going to relax back down all right, so I'm going to share one more upper body stretch since we're on the topic of upper body stretches, yeah. right? We just opened up our chest. We stretch out our, our delts, triceps, biceps. Now we're going to do the head and the neck because we take so much tension here. We yes. have to talk about the head and the neck. Yes. Um, so we want to, for this next stretch, take the ear to the shoulder, not oh, the other okay. way around. We don't want the shoulder to come to the ear. We want to take the ear to the shoulder. So it's only going to go, you're only working within your own range of motion, not the person that's sitting next to you, you know, not the person you're seeing on the screen, but you're going to take your ear and you're going to drop it to your shoulder. Then you're going to roll your chin down towards your chest and you're going to take your ear to the opposite shoulder. So your shoulders aren't moving as you go back down and around and you're going to come up. And we're always going to go forward. We're never going to go backwards because we don't want to crunch into that spine. It's the same thing. If we're going to go up and backwards, you can actually throw out all of your, your shoulders and your cervical spine and have a whole bunch more issues. So with those three things, you can undo this position, wow. right? Nice. You can really release any tension. You can de-stress. You're fighting your fatigue and your stress. Uh, but it's really a, a very easy way um, to kind of change and make a healthy change oh to your gosh. workspace lifestyle, which we call our work style. Uh, yeah. And the greatest thing about these things is that it doesn't take, you know, 30 minutes. It doesn't take no. an hour. And, you know, even when you have five minutes in between your Zoom calls, those three things you can fit in to anything that you're doing. Oh, my gosh. I <laughs> I think I forget just how much like stress I carry um, yeah. or like in our yeah. bodies, right? Like right. even just doing yeah. that makes me so much more conscious well, of. You just, you're like, you're relaxed now, you know, yeah. it's just a different kind of feeling. It, even, I mean, like I do this stuff all the time and even going through those three stretches, I'm like, okay, now I'm good. Yeah, like I, I feel good now. Yeah. Melissa saying very helpful. Thanks so much for this. Uh, Brayden, this is so helpful. Yeah, it feels good. Jennifer, I agree. It certainly does. Um, <laughs> Dave is like, the tension's melting. Perfect. Yeah, Perfect. that's what we want. We want it to just start to drain away. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Oh. <laughs> now, now that we have the stretches, you also talk about the importance of like a mantra and self-care. Yeah. Right. Definitely. Um, Why and that is that kind of so goes, important? Well, it goes with the total body and what we kind of touched on before. And it's really important that um, because we're talking right. physically, that you also want to be able to take a brain break and be able to step away from you. I know that sounds silly, right? You, you're working. You want to get through your work day. You want to be able to close your computer, turn off the screen, whatever it is at the end of the day. And I hope you do have the ability to have an end of work day. I really do hope that. But you need throughout the day to kind of give yourself a brain break. And personally for me, um, I love my like little mini mantras when I need that the stress kind of creeps in and I need that, you know, 30 seconds to be like, wait a second, I, I know I can do this, I can do this, and I will do this. And it's really simply just something to say, okay, shut down, refocus, yeah boot and then achieve what's a mantra you say to yourself that it just that i know i can and i will i know i can i love it love it yeah and um i also let me just make sure we have some questions <laughs> yeah kevin says i need more brain breaks <laughs> yeah and i Absolutely. exercises are a great way for a brain break there you go <laughs> There you go. And um, let's see here. So you also, and I think you mentioned earlier, right? Like breathing exercises, right? We, yeah. we underestimate the importance of breathing. But you have this technique where you say you can actually breathe to energize. What does yeah, that mean? So 
Well, so people always talk about breathing to relax, but nobody wants to relax during your workday. They don't want to be put to sleep, right? So they really want to say like, okay, I, how how can I like, push through? And again, it comes from my dance and Pilates background and the way that um, posture comes into play in both of those things. Um, and for dance, you work your breath around your movements. So when you go to make a big move, any kind of big jump, turn, anything, before you do it, you inhale deeply in through your nose. So you fill up your lungs and then you hold, and it depends on how, how much you can hold. And we, we can go through this. And yeah. then you exhale as you hit the peak of the movement. So the idea is that you're giving yourself a burst of energy. The breath actually helps you move and achieve what your, what your goal is. And so what I teach people when we do these breathing exercises is that this is like a little shot of espresso, you know, like your, mm. your afternoon espresso. It it's is natural. A great way to add. <laughs> yes, exactly. Using your breath. So do we have time to give it a try? Yes, let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, audience member, make sure you try this too. <laughs> yeah. So again, the same thing, bottom to top, make sure your feet are planted on the ground. Your spine is nice and long. You're saying, no, I'm not ready for my work day, but yes, I'm going to try this breathing technique so I can power through the Jobu fit way. And then what we're going to do is you're going to take your hands and you're going to place them onto your lungs. Okay. So your rib cage, you had bony part right there. You should be able to feel it. So your lungs are not down here. It's really kind of uncomfortable. Like your thumbs are almost up into your armpits. Okay. Then what you're going to do is you're going to imagine that if this is your rib cage, right? When you inhale, your ribs are splaying open. So you can actually feel it. And we're going to inhale in through our nose. So you're going to go. And that was my lungs. That's not my hands doing that. And then you're going to exhale out of your mouth and you're going to collapse your rib cage. So this, if you try this for the first time and it actually does feel a little bit scary, that, that's fine. I mean, your lungs are not collapsing on you, but you right. do want to make sure that you're breathing in through your nose. Then we're going to hold for a count of, let's say, three to make it easy. And then we're going to exhale out of the mouth. So we're going to go in for five. We're going to hold for three and we're going to exhale for five. Really okay. simple, but we're going to do this with intention. So we're taking this passive motion, which is breathing right? Our hearts beat, our digestive system works, we breathe, but we don't have to think about those things. So that is a passive action. And we're going to make it an active action. So we're going to focus on our breath. And we're going to intentionally breathe, hold and exhale. Okay. So hands go back on. Yeah. Our hands are on your ribs, on your uh, rib cage. Yeah. You're going to inhale in through your nose for a count of five, hold for three, exhale out of pursed lips, for a count of five. Another silly face. Okay. You got to okay. deal with me. Here got we go. It. I love it. Two, three, four, five. Hold. Two, three. Now exhale through your mouth. Four, three, two, one. One more time. Inhale. Hold. Two, three. Exhale. Last time. Inhale. And exhale. So the last thing that I'm going to leave you here with for specifically with breathing is that you need to check your shoulders. And I want you to do this um, without, you know, like checking later on, you know, go revisit it later today, even tomorrow. Yeah. And when you do your breathing, press your shoulders down as your ah. lungs open. So ah. that's the last thing. I, okay. I don't want to throw that in when you're starting because I really want you to focus on the pattern yeah. of the breath and the actual motion of the breathing. But then the next challenge point is to get the, the shoulders out of the equation because really it's your lungs and your lungs are here and your shoulders are here. So they don't need to be involved in. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> it. it really is helping. I love it. Here's a new term, brain breaks and breathing espresso. <laughs> what a combo. There you go. I love, it. I I love, love that it. play on words, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> Sharon says, loving this. Yeah. Mark says, this is fun. Maybe each program should practice and review one of these exercises each week to warm up. There yeah. you go. Uh, Alyssa, you can come for like two minutes for every show. Anytime you want me, Fanny, just say, hey, come pop in. I'll do it. Anytime. How many of you want Alyssa to be a regular member of the show and she can come do these one minute exercises yeah, with one us? One minute things. Yeah. Two minutes and we can it. do a stretch and a move and then you move on with your day. Totally can do that. I love that, David. Yeah. Breathe. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because we, to Mark's point, like 
we need these constant reminders, right? Like, yeah. it's obviously wonderful. Like, I, I already feel more conscious of my body and just breath, even just from this little brief episode. But how do you have any tips on just like, how do we even remind ourselves to to even do it? Like we get so absorbed or I get so absorbed in work. Um, do you have any tips around yeah. like reminders for ourselves? So there's a couple of things that, that actually there's two things I'll say with this. Um, with the Jobu Fit program, we have eight weeks to your healthy spring reboot. So we mm-hmm. really take this step by step and we actually teach you how to schedule it in. And that's the purpose of the program. Um, But then also, I don't know if you're like me, Fanny, but I am a scheduler and Mm. I use alarms to remind me to have a snack. Ah. I use alarms to remind me to have lunch. I use alarms to remind me to move or to walk the dog. I'm not, but I like that idea. Yeah. And so that's the easiest way to do it. The, but the problem with just simply setting a reminder or an alarm on your phone is it's so easy to just like ignore, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but we, through our eight week program, um, mm-hmm. teach you how to schedule it in bit by bit. So I don't expect you to say tomorrow, I'm going to schedule every 50 minutes and then 10 minutes moving. We actually take it step by step and we improve upon ourselves 1% daily. So we really start with two minutes a day. And for the first week, all I want you to do is walk for two minutes. And so in that way, by the end of the eight weeks, you're actually tricking your brain into craving movement because over those eight weeks, you've worked up to about at about almost 10 minutes at a time. It's about seven minutes at a time. And then you can do it about three to four times a day. And that's the goal is that we want to get to the point where your body's like, oh, I've been sitting for too long. I need to do something. You know, that that's what we want to get to. <laughs> See, look, they, they all want you to come every week. <laughs> <laughs> Yolanda's like, yes. <laughs> She was like, yes, Jennifer's yes. Well, if you want, if, and if you yes. want me like ev- every single day, you can go to the JD Days Free exactly. and give it a try. Yeah. yeah. So if you have if you want to yeah. put that link up, that's a way to give it a you have try. A new best friend. Uh, <laughs> David, go over the Instagram and tell me what you think. Yes. <laughs> All of you head over to Instagram. I do want to give a chance for you to tell people about your program and you have some, uh, Anne has put it into the comments, uh, but walk us through this program. Okay, so this link here, thank you, Anne. Um, Right now, because we just launched it, it is a brand new program and currently it's $10 off. So it's $40 right now for anyone who signs up. But because you are watching The Fanny Show, which I'm very happy to meet you all here, I'm gonna give you an extra $5 off. And if you follow that link, um, you it's right there. It takes it off right for you. If you go to the landing page by, you know, visiting my, my website or my Instagram or anything like that, and you find yourself there, the actual code is Fanny live and you can just type that code in and it'll take an extra $5 off for you. I love it. I love it. Perfect. 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 Thank you. Thank you. The hour just went by like that, Alyssa. I know. <laughs> no, it flies by. That's great. Um, yeah. You you have a whole legion of fans now. Yeah. I'm, uh, Sharon's I'm like, happy. I'm going to wake up to her Instagram. <laughs> awesome. I mean, and, and then revisit it throughout the day because really you don't want to do it like one and done. Do it right before you eat lunch, maybe a three o'clock snack, something like that. But yeah. yeah. Okay. So as we wrap up, I always like to ask our guests to to share a tip from your heart, like an inspirational tip. What gets you through the day when you're down and you, you know, you're having a stressful day or something has gone wrong? What what motivates you and inspires you, Alyssa? Um, My stressful when I have a stressful moment and something that inspires me, I think it has to do with looking back on where this started and seeing where it is now. I think that's something that um, just a point of reflection. I think that's really the the name of the game for me. Um, I have a plan and I have a plan of where I would like to see Joe Buffett. I think everyone has like five-year plans for different things. Um, But sometimes those just seem like they're just a little too far. And, you know, but 
when I look back on everything I've accomplished in the last five years, I'm like, then it kind of refocuses and puts everything back into place and says, okay, if I've done this, then I can, you know, take the next step forward. Mm -hmm. I love it. Have a plan, reflect back. Perfect. Um, so just stay right there, Alessa. I just want to announce a few upcoming events and then we're going to wrap up here. For those of you out there, um, I do want to remind everyone, especially those of you that are technology enthusiasts, um, as I'm a member of the Association of Business Technology Professionals, our monthly chapter meeting is going to be on Tuesday, March 23rd at 6, and it is with the CIO, former CIO of Kaiser Permanente, Dick Daniels. We are going to have it virtually as well as in person, uh, virtually on my LinkedIn feed, and then in person at the Las Colinas Country Club in uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So if you are a technology enthusiast, please come join us. And we're going to talk all about his career retrospective and where we should go. And you can register at abtpdfw.org for that. As far as next week, um, I am going on vacation. <laughs> And so I'm not going to have a full on show, but um, I think I'll, you know, take you on my vacation with me and we can stare at the beach for a while during um, my, my show time. So uh, next week is going to be a very casual show uh, from the beach. Okay. And uh, in the meantime, Alessa, thank you. Thank you so Thank much you. for your time. Thank you for all your great stretches and tips and advice. And uh, for those of you out there, make sure you go to her website. She has a bit.ly here, uh, bit.ly backslash Jobu Days Free. That is one of her promotions. Or you can go to jobufit.com. And uh, let me pull up your website for them real quick here. Sure. Um, and then there's the website and then they can get on for the three days free or they can use <laughs> that. Uh, let me pull up Anne's thing. The, um, where was that? Oh yes, there it is. The five day, $5 off and go use the promo code Fanny live. So thank you. Thank you, Alessa. Thank you. I had so much fun. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So we'll we'll talk. Maybe maybe you can come yeah, guess anytime. Guess exercises with uh, Alessa. Sure, <laughs> I love it. Well, Hi. thank you, thank you for your time. Thank you to all of you, you that have tuned in. Make sure you connect with Alessa. She's on LinkedIn as well as Instagram. Instagram at Alessa dot Fit. And um, thank you, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Mm -hmm.